Hello, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury 63 with another exhibition match stream. A little earlier than usual. I'm a bit busy this afternoon, so I am going to be doing this a couple hours early. Sorry for those of you who are not going to be able to catch it as a result. The VODs will also, as a result, not be on YouTube as early as they normally would be, but they will be there. Although, admittedly, if you're listening to this, it will probably be on YouTube, and that last statement will make little sense. Which means you should watch the stream. But that's in the title screen right now, so if you want to know the stream links and usual timings, they are in the screen right now in the bottom right corner. Self-promotion aside, let us get to the game. So it's going to be Flipstep and Filthos on Trojan Hills. This map for... actually, let's just start a bit. This map, fairly simple. Plus 1.9 everywhere. So no, no changes for metal. Metal is constant throughout. Which is kind of nice. Very easy to consider. I can get rid of the economy display for one thing. And the map itself, very hilly, but the way it's laid out, you have flat areas throughout the center, and you have these hills along the side, and the sides are also kind of flattish, so there's room for vehicles to operate, as well as for bots to operate, and spider bots work particularly well. Unlike bandit planes, there isn't water in between, so this is not a complete block. Jumper, well, jumpers always can get through, but spiders can actually get through. One of the things about bandit planes, because a it's a massive valley with water inside. Spiders cannot get through, and Amphibs can't get through, and Hovercraft can't get through. It's, it is the only way you can create a solid wall in 0k. Well, that and restricting terraforming. So, Failthos is going for Shieldbot Factory, while Flipstep has been going for the Light Vehicle Factory. Flipstep is going quickly with the scouting, trying to... I apologize, there seems to be a bit of choppiness, but anyway. Flipstep is going for early scouting, has spotted what Felthos is doing. Felthos just now catching up to Flipstip in that particular aspect of the game. Getting a dirt bag into Flipstip's base and Felthos. Oh, I should have checked that. No, Felthos apparently did not see the factory though. They do know that the factory is a light vehicle factory. They they saw the darts, they have full knowledge of the type of units they are fighting, they know what matchup they're fighting, and they are the shield bot factory, which, except for levelers, has a bit of an advantage in this matchup, or historically has. Now, I'm not sure it's quite as big of an advantage, mostly because levelers are quite popular. So I imagine that Felthos will have to deal with that. If they go for a lot of thugs, if they go for a lot of rogues, that will mostly counter it. It's still kind of tricky though. Rogues, you pretty much have to manual micro if you want to make them work very effectively. On the other hand, you don't have to really worry about that too much with thugs or outlaws. It's just that thugs are not immune to levelers. Leveler, blasts, they have enough splash damage, they can essentially get under the shields. That's always the concern. That's the thing that Light Vehicle wants to do. Because otherwise, Light Vehicle either has to dive in with Scorchers, which the shields overlap, so it becomes difficult for the Scorchers to actually deal any damage, or they're using Ravagers, and that... If they get close enough, it works, but otherwise, they have to break down the shields first. And... And it looks like Felthaus trying to make sure that they know if Flipstep's going for the south... Sorry, the northwest corner of the map. Just, they want to make sure that Flipstep cannot expand. Flipstep has to respect Felthaus if they want to get out. They have to make sure that they're not just naked expanding. And the thing is, Flipstep is respecting Felthaus. They threw out that Scorcher. They double-checked. They didn't just go with the worker and hope for the best. And similarly, Flipstep is putting the same thing in the path of Felthaus. However, Felthaus is sending their commander in, which... While setting up a Lotus is not the most useful thing, that commander is going to upgrade likely to Beam Laser and sh will have no problem taking out the Scorcher. The Scorcher wasn't even trying to kill the commander, wasn't even diving in, and it will in fact be Light Particle Beam with Nanolathe. So this is primarily a Nanolathe commander. Failthos also very quickly getting up the first Caretaker. Flipstep has actually not yet done so. They're focusing most of their economy, sorry, most of their attention on economy. Oh, yeah, that's right, actually. They're focusing most of their economy on building more economy, while Failthos, on the other hand, They've built a fair amount of economy, they're fairly confident about that. They're focusing their attention on building their units. They have the Caretaker up, they have... it's... Mostly, as far as I can tell, for insurance. I mean, in the time that they're, the units are walking around, they aren't actually building anything. Just gives them a few extra units here and there. Flipstep, however, not going for that. They are focused entirely on setting up their economy. And at this point, they're actually slightly behind in terms of economy. Oh, as right as I say that, they jump ahead. But yeah, they are... They are still neck and neck. Flipstep, however, being very cautious to take this... Well, not even cautious. They're setting up defenses, but they're taking the center, which is not a cautious move at all. Felthos, on the other hand, they've been going along the edge of the map, going along the south edge of the map, making it that much harder for them to be countered for this. 
I just pointed out that flip step is in a much more forward position there. Their factory right here is much more aggressive. They were clearly trying to get a lot of territory in the center just based on their factory position. Veltos, on the other hand, they had a more defensive position. They kept themselves back. It's harder to hold this area here if you don't have this. Like if you have the area that starts around these metal spots, as Flipstip does, get in the area down in the set, well, down in the lower section here, this, this valley. That is something that's easier to do. You only have to defend this side. Whereas if you take the valley, you can hold the valley decently well if you, that's your main base. But then you have no easy, you have to take this and then there's high ground that comes in. The high ground coming in here is kind of tricky and there's also a very easy path here. This southeast section is a bit easier, to, actually it's fairly, considerably easier to defend. But it's still getting both of those. I find when I start here, it's harder to take the southeast or the northwest. Starting in the center, it's... Well, like I said, if you're trying to be defensive, it works. But Flipstep, clearly not so much. Flipstep just now getting the Northwest, not even worrying about that. They have been going for the center, which they're actually being able to keep. Felthas is not challenging them. I don't even know if Felthas knows about it. Felthas does know about some of the Lotuses. Okay, now they definitely know. They have radar up. They have full knowledge of what's going on. Or at least they have enough to infer what is going on. Like, they can know there is something up. But Felthas, well... They are going for it, but they're going to have a hard time doing so. The Scorchers are not allowing the Bandits easy way through. And that's the one thing about playing against light vehicles. It's always the hard part. A bit harder for Shield Bots than Cloakie Bots, but equally hard for both for the most part, is they are slow. Bots are slow compared to vehicles. That is the main advantage of vehicles, is speed. The disadvantage generally being that for both li well, light vehicles, the disadvantage is that you don't really have a lot of the main roles. Like your Raider has this gimmick of range, has to be really close to attack. Your scout deals a fair amount of damage, but that's... it dies too quickly. The riot unit's about the only one that's really straightforward. The Ravager has an easily dodged projectile, so the assault unit isn't... isn't great against units that can maneuver easily, which... bots can maneuver really easily, vehicles not so much. Vehicles are faster, but less agile. And Thalesos, able to get in here, should be able to tear apart a few defenses, but I don't think this is going to get that far in. The Thug is the only thing really pushing this forward. But yeah, you have the Slasher, your Skirmisher needs to stay put. Like, there's a lot of things that limits the Light Vehicle Factory and how effective they can be. And down goes the Thug, so that is going to be that raid pretty much in a nutshell. Bandit's going to take what little else they can, and that's done. Veldos, however, took advantage of that opportunity to expand, to build up, or at least to set up Bandits where they're planning to expand, expanding over to the Center East, and setting up Bandits to expand later on to the Center West. As I was saying, yeah, light vehicles have that weakness. Heavy tanks is more just cost. Heavy tanks have more straightforward units, but they are expensive. You pretty much need static defenses in order to stay around, and you aren't going to have as many units. So that is going to be a bit of an issue. But that's irrelevant, because that is not what we're playing. Or rather, what we're watching. We are watching air... actually, well, watching air switch. We're watching light vehicles and air, now, against shield bots. And it looks like Failthos is... Probably trying to explode here. Flipstip going to raid over the northeast, well, southeast, but Failthos sees that coming. Flipstip doesn't really know what's there. I think Flipstip's just exploring to try to figure out what's going on, and will find out that there is a metal extractor, finds out there's a lotus, and Failthos has, well, just lost a metal extractor. But Failthos, however, does have a huge amount of bandits. They went around that leveler, and I think, is that the only leveler? That is the only leveler, so these bandits are basically going to have a field day ripping apart everything until the point where another leveler comes up, and that isn't... Okay, levelers are coming up, emergency levelers. Flipstep making sure they have levelers coming up, but it's very last minute. However, those bandits won't be able to easily get through. And a air switch for Failthos, but Flipstep already getting Ravens up. They already have two, well, one second in production. Failthos, they will have to deal with... Okay, now they have to deal with a leveler. They might be able to get around it, if, as long as they're careful to make sure their bandits are not bunched up, they should be okay. But they... no, that's too much. The defender's advantage is too high. At the same time, though, Flipstip getting their commander somewhat threatened over in the, in the center of the map. And Felthos trying to threaten the northwest, but kind of lost focus on that. They were focusing too much on the main base, they didn't focus on the side bases. And the commander able to get away as well. Flipstip, they are being... They're way ahead at this point. I mean, their economy is up by about at least 20%. Like, 20% to double, depending on how much reclaim is being taken at the moment. 
And unfortunately that log got hit by the thug. That that happens, that's a thing. I've mentioned this before, friendly fire is not friendly. And Raven's coming in to try to deal with the thugs. This is actually... This is somewhat efficient because they do dive, but it's... Not the most efficient thing to do. The thugs are still going to have a very easy time getting in. Should be able to tear apart most of the center. And Felthos with the anti-air, taking out Flipsteps Ravens, or at least discouraging them from coming into the area. Not quite enough to fully take them out. A second Hawk coming in here, that should help. But these thugs are pretty undeterred. They are very, very rapidly running through the center of the map, tearing that apart. And this is why the center of the map here is not super popular, and why Felthos went over to the south first. Because the center of the map is hard to hold. If you can hold it, you've almost completely won. It's possible to come back if your opponent holds it, but it is difficult. But yeah, that's the thing. You just don't have any easy way of getting back the center. Like, well, taking the center and holding it in general. But at the same time, trying to press the center when your opponent has it is not always the best idea. There are other ways around. You can go through the center west side or the center east side if you're trying to attack south. So there are ways around it that are not the center itself. Now, Felthas does have a couple defenses on the way that would, if they take, the, if they took the center, that would intercept it. Flipstip similarly is taking an area where they are basically trying to prevent Felthas from intercepting. They're trying to prevent Felthas from getting behind their defensive line. But there is still this path over here to the west. There's still the paths over to the east that aren't really well defended. Especially if you go around back, that's really hard to do. I don't think anyone's ever done that. The northeast and southwest, that little ridge is rarely used. And Dominatrix up for Flipstip. That is going to be a pain. That is another really good tool that the Light Vehicle Factory has. Like, levelers and Dominatrices are basically the counter shield bot. And there's not even one with Felons up yet. The Felon hasn't even come up, and I don't even know if it is. No, it, well, I don't know if it will, because Felthos is not focusing on it. Nor is Felthos focusing on air. They're focusing entirely on Thug Outlaw. I think they're... Well, normally you'd be trying to make a Thug Outlaw ball and then add felons to it to get the last little cap on the firepower. But the problem is... Actually, that's the wrong choice of words. The crowning... The crowning end of the firepower? I don't know. You you finish off adding firepower by adding the felon. But with... The Dominatrix out, I don't think Failsauce really wants to do that. However, I'm wrong. I'm very wrong. A felon is, in fact, under construction. So Failthos apparently believes they have enough of a Thug Law Ball to be able to deal with this. And I'd say that if it weren't for the Dominatrix, they'd be right. But at the same time, they are building more Thugs. So they will be able to keep that ball fairly large. This is the one problem with the Thug Law Ball. This is the big problem with shields, as can be very clearly seen, as mentioned before, is speed. Flipstep taking full advantage of this, going to the southeast while Failthos attacks the center. Flipstep attacks the southeast, will be able to tear everything apart. This Lotus is the only thing in the way. If it goes down, and the Leveler should be able to make it go down, if not, the Wolverine will. This area is down. And then from there, it's a fairly short trek over to the factory to intercept everything coming out. And admittedly, Felthos is making units very rapidly. They're making one, one bandit every two seconds. That is going to be tricky to make work, but at the same time, Felthos, they... They have... Their only hope is to try to break down the center, and even that's going to be a very tough job. However, only a Vandal was taken, so it's going to be considerably easier to get around. But the Felon has been destroyed by Thug, or by Levelers. This is what I mean. Levelers get under shields. They tear it apart. And at the same time, the Levelers... This Leveler over here should be able... Actually, it's going to get cornered. This Leveler over here in the southeast corner of the map is doomed. But the, so is this Thug. Now, at the same time, Felthos has actually taken the interception lane. They could go behind Philipsip's forces and attack them directly. They could harass in the areas that are not as well defended. They're not this front line that Flipsip has invested most of their economy into. But at the same time, Felthos, they need to be careful about preventing the area from getting through this area once again, because this eastern side of the map, that has been under-defended by both players the entire game. The western side has been fairly heavily defended, but the eastern side, other than Flipsip's main base, has been essentially a free area. Anyone can take it, anyone can march units through it, no one has been bothering with it. At this point, Flipsip has been st starting to take some stuff in it. Failthos, however, needs to make sure that nothing is able to get in. But all at the same time, make sure the center can't. Flipsip really forcing Failthos to spread themselves around, and also getting rid of that western side that I just mentioned, the defensive area. <sighs> Flipsip making it just hard for Failthos to do anything. Like, this, like, Flipsip is taking full advantage of what the Vehicle Factory can do, because the Vehicle Factory, as mentioned, their advantage is speed. Their disadvantage is 
a raft of unorthodox units, but their advantage is speed. And that speed advantage means you can basically force your opponent to go where you want, and then go somewhere else. You can do so much in the way of faking them out, of leading them on, and of generally making it difficult for them to actually get their opponent, their units in position. I mean, in part you have to do this, because especially with Shieldbot, especially if they have a couple felons, it becomes very difficult to actually get through, because felons deal a huge amount of damage. The bombers here have been, they have been a boon for Flipstep. They have been one of the biggest reasons Flipstep has been able to get rid of those felons. That's been two felons now for almost free they've taken out, which explains the massive military advantage. I mean, Felthos is going to have a tough time getting through this. If they can get rid of... How many bombers are left anyway? There's actually very few. flipsip has been focusing a lot on air control. They will start building Ravens fairly soon, but they are actually out of them. Oh no, they have one. Yeah, they have this one Raven, which is all it takes. And felons only have... Actually, no, sorry, it needs two. They have 1,400 health. But anyway, as I was saying, Felthos cannot really control where Flipstep goes because Felthos' units are too slow. The bandits can sort of help, but the levelers just stop them cold. So after that, Flipstep basically has control of the map, like just from the word go. The only way around it is essentially to make sure that the light vehicle player is relatively contained. They only have like one or two ways out, and they can't really attack without running into your units. Unfortunately, Felthos did not do this, so Felthos right now trying to come back, trying to push out with Felons, but of course Felons do use their own shields to attack, which is the biggest issue trying to deal with them. <sighs> trying to deal with using them, I should say. Felthos is, I think, out of this game. There's no real way to get back. It looks like it is going to be Flipstip's game. Felthos going for one last strike. One last attempt here. I think if Felthos had sent bandits around the corner, they probably they would have been able to take out these expansion. This expansion here easily. This expansion here easily. This expansion over here, I say about a dozen bandits or so would have been able to take it out. They would have lost all of them, but they would have been able to take it out eventually. And that would have just slowed Flipstip down. Given Felthos some time to regroup, to build up units so that if they're evenly trading, they're still ahead. Because they were trading okay, but they were behind. Like, they were way behind. Like, trading evenly was pulling them in behind, because they had the lower economy. So that's the one thing, is light vehicles... Light vehicles are scary if they are allowed to move freely. And shield bots can't really move freely at all, so it's that's the tricky thing. And Felthos did not, unfortunately, have enough of a contain there. Didn't throw the bandits around for raiding. I think that probably would have made the difference. If bandits had been thrown around for raiding, that would have just damaged Flipstep's economy, forced them back, forced them away from that center, and especially if they had managed to flank the center, like get behind the defenses going through this lane here, that would have likely caused a very different game to unfold. However, that is what happened, so I'll have another one for you in just a moment. It'll be slightly lower elo. Yogtatoth and Kane, and I mean slightly. They're both quite good anyway, so that's going to be on Aquatic Divide. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.